Today, we're so excited to be joined by a legend in doll fashion, sculptor, and character designer who has worked with everyone from Disney to Warner Brothers and now Sideshow. Please welcome Robert Tonner. Hello, Robert. How are you today? I'm Wendy. I'm great. I'm great. It's good to be here. It's such a pleasure to have you. We've been spending a lot of time indoors lately. So yeah. what have you been watching, reading, or listening to? <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, Power of the Dog movies. I'm trying to catch up with my Oscar movies uh, before the Oscars. Uh, what else? What am I reading? I'm actually writing middle grade fiction, so I'm reading a few middle grade books. Yes. And uh, what else? That's, you know, baking. That's what I do. <laughs> besides, Oh my gosh. That's, stuff, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. What's been your favorite thing that you've been baking so far? I like cakes. Yeah. I, I do this, this wicked uh, hostess cupcake cake that's probably about, uh, I don't know, 12 inches tall and filled with cream and stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> so now we're going to have to bake, add yeah. baker to your resume as well. Yeah, you're going to have to. Yes. <laughs> I've also heard that you are a fan of donuts. Love donuts. Yes. Have you tried making homemade donuts? No, I don't feel like I need to because there's, there's too much good <laughs> stuff out there. But do you see a theme here? This you know, donuts, is true. cake, you know, that's <laughs> that's my life. Well, aside from talking about sweet things, I am also surrounded by beautiful, glamorous dolls. And Robert, I just want to dive into these dolls right here. Um, to my left, I have for the viewers who are watching who may not know, this is Moire, and she is actually the same three dolls, but dressed in three different outfits. And she is the online alter ego, I believe, of Olivia Chase. So before we dive into the backstory of outfits here, can you give us the backstory on Olivia Chase and giving her an alter ego and how did that all come about? Well, you know, I've found over the years that to engage a collector, you know, a, and especially a, a doll lover, you know, you need to have a backstory. And if you look at what Sideshow does, you know, 99% of what you guys do have extensive backstories like Batman, Star Wars, you know, just anything you could name from you guys. And it, it doesn't make sense to just come out with a doll that's wearing a pretty dress. To me, you know, that's not interesting to me. So, you know, we came up with the backstory for this. And I, one, th something that I thought was very interesting that's going on now are that these are, there are digital personas that represent fashion companies. So they're not real people. They're, they're like, you know, a CGI digital model. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if, we could wrap that in somehow. And that's that's kind of how we got to this, you know, the start of the storyline. So Robert, I love that you brought up superheroes and their secret identity and or alter ego. So just let's really dive into the, the backstory of both Olivia and Moray here. How would you describe Olivia's personality and how would you describe Moray's personality? Well, I have to I have to start with the story. There's 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 a guy who is coming up with this idea that we should have a digital marketing person for his company. The company's really behind it. So uh, they give him the go ahead and all this and he's working and he's working and he, he's come up with a, you know, dozens of different models and all this, but he just can't get it. So uh, the, the, the people are starting to lose faith in him. His, his bosses are starting to lose faith in him and he, he didn't know what to do. So he's at a coffee shop and he's, you know, he's got, he's got the weekend to go and he doesn't have his digital persona, his di digital model. And in walks Olivia Chase. Now, Olivia Chase is a woman who doesn't want, she does, she's been asked to model many times and she has no interest. She comes from a, a, her mother owns a modeling agency. So she's introduced to this guy. They hit it off. And uh, he, he convinces her over the weekend that, that she come and try on these wonderful clothes and let him take pictures. And they would digitize her to make her look more CGI. And, and that's, that's, yeah, that's how, how it came about. So, you know, I kind of love where we're going on the story. And the characters are kind of taken off on their own, <laughs> in their own little way. So it's, it's, it's kind of a fun story. So she's a reluctant model and Moray is a digital persona who doesn't really have a personality yet. Um, I think 
let me see. She's environmental law, Olivia Chase. That's what she's into. I, I love that so much. So I would love to dive into these outfits. We're going to go with the very first one, the one that's closest to the camera in white. This is the romantic notion. And the second I saw this, I thought just woodland fantasy. It's Alice in Wonderland. It's Cinderella. Was that some of your inspiration while you were designing this it, outfit? Yeah, it absolutely was a fantasy sort of thing. So it was kind of over the top fantasy and all in these, you know, ethereal pale colors. But let, I'll explain to you why there's three different looks so so moray can she's being pitched as a spokesperson or an influencer who can go to any fashion house and be the 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 spokesperson so they they get three different fashion houses to submit outfits so the first one romantic notion is by you know a, a designer who does you know whimsical sort of romantic sort of looks so that that's where she comes from. Wow, the, these stories they just go so so much deeper than I ever anticipated, and I love hearing these because now my brain, sort of the creative side of me, wants to you know give her like who is she meeting, um, and how Olivia's kind of take on this, you know, when once she sees all of this online because it's her face, it's her body, but it's a whole different persona. And I find that so fascinating. Uh, and I love the different outfits that you give. And I love the explanation of the different fashion houses because we have the outfit in the middle, which is the mixed media. And it's she's a, a whole different persona. She's got her bright hair. Even though it's a black dress, it is shiny. It is eye catching. And she's got all the accessory going with that. Can you talk a little bit more about the mixed media outfit? Yeah, it's it's a uh, silver print on this black kind of shiny fabric, and it's it's you know it's it's more of a a harder cut. It's edgier and and, and with the bright colors and the black, the contrast. It's a uh, different sort of harder edged look for Moray. I love that so much, and I love that it's you know head to toe from the different hair to the accessory that's worn around her wrist. She's got fishnets on and the boots. You get the whole picture and it's the complete persona change, even, even though it's the same character because you have from Romantic Notion, it's soft, it's whimsical, like you said, fairy tale. And then the next one is, you know, I can see her, you know, no photos, please, uh, sort right. of on the red carpet, <laughs> you know, trying to snap her photo. And she's kind of winter, like uh, Anna Wintour, throw the shades on, glasses, like no photos, I'm too busy right now. It's very mysterious as well, even though, you know, this is an online persona. And I would love to talk about this final outfit here, uh, the blue one closest to me. Can you talk a little bit more about this one in detail? Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's a, um, a a sh kind of a sheer dress and it's it's a, uh, a sorry an embroidered chiffon with hand beading uh, sprinkled all over it this one is done by a more classic house this would be a house you know a designed house that would do dresses for you know openings and galas and stuff like this so it's a it's a lot more classic and you know like her hair kind of reflects that and you know, that's where I was going with that, or that's where Moray was going with that. I love that. I believe this one is called Stargazing. And I like that you brought up red carpet and the glam and the gala, because immediately when I saw it, and I like the sheer outfit that it's, you know, three different tiers of like, I don't know if you've called these, like the technical term is like different peplums than tiers. Uh, but I immediately thought this is something I could see definitely at a Met Gala. That's 100% what I saw with the hair. It's very glam, it's soft, but it's eye-catching as well because it's very like, the, your attention is drawn immediately to this outfit for me. Thank you, yes, I think so too. It's, it's one of my favorites, yeah. So let's talk about fashion with the dolls because I know you're very experienced in both doll design and as well as fashion design. What was the biggest difference from your working with fashion, so full size, and then scaling that down to making patterns for dolls? Was that really challenging of a switch to make for you? Well, when I, when I, I, I worked on 7th Avenue in New York City for a long time. At that time, I had, I had a, you know, I had pattern making staff. So I would do a sketch and give them the fabric and say, here, make this. And then I'd criticize it when they came. <laughs> so, hmm, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm making the patterns now for these. So uh, it doesn't take as much fabric. And these models don't ever complain, no matter how many times you stick them with the pins. So I, I, <laughs> I, I kind of like, I, you know, making clothes for fashion shows, that was always fun. 
but making clothes for real people, not so much fun. Making clothes for dolls is much more rewarding and you can kind of do what you want. So, it, you know, yeah, I, I, I really like this. And hopefully I bring some of that fashion design stuff, uh, all the schooling and everything, you know, to, to some of this, you know, in the pattern making and all that. So, um, and, and I think I do, I, I get the fits I want and, and uh, that sort of thing. But there wasn't really any challenge for you, you know, scaling down from a bigger size to a smaller pattern at all. No, it's, it's kind of like, it's like sculpting. You know, if, you, if you're sculpting big, you, you get into that mindset. And if you're uh, sculpting small, you know, of course, now I do everything digitally, so it doesn't matter. You know, it's all on the screen and, and uh, you know, I, I, I sculpt what I sculpt. But no, the sizing down doesn't really, you know, it's, it's the same headset. You just have to, you know, think smaller. Yeah. And you have also made the switch, like you just talked about with sculpting. Uh, I believe you started with just traditional clay and then you made the switch over to digital. Is everything much easier for you now that it's digital? Oh my God. Less I'm messy. Such, I'm such a lazy artist. It's terrible. <laughs> and so I used to, I'd set up my clay. I had a room that I would just, you know, I'd close the door because I, I, I never felt like taking it down. I never felt like putting, you know, so getting me into the, I loved the sculpting when I was in there, but you know, getting into the sculpting room was something. But now with, with digital, and it, believe me, there was, a, there was a steep learning curve to learn the digital sculpting. If I have 10 minutes to sculpt, I can just you know, hit a button and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sculpting. So it's, it's great. Something that I'm kind of curious about too, when it comes to how you were sculpting with clay before, um, with dolls, just like fashion, there's a lot of symmetry what was it like for you to try to match the symmetry of the doll's face using clay back then? What was it like? It was hell. That's what it was like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the biggest problem. That was the biggest problem. And I got to where I was pretty good at it. You have to train yourself how to see it, you know? But uh, I, this is so... Because if you're worried about symmetry so much, you're kind of missing... You know, I was missing other things, you know? Like I'd get it to where I think it looks great, but the symmetry's off, so I work on it till the symmetry's right. But I've missed, you know, I've I've I lost what I loved about the sculpt in the first place. But now with um, digital stuff, I can, you know, I can go back to any point in the sculpt and, you know, start from there again if I have to, or you know, save multiple versions of it. Yeah, it's like, you know, I was born way too early. <laughs> <laughs> way too early. So the digital route was a, was a good switch oh, to go, yes, good way yes, to go. Yes. Uh, I want to quickly talk about the uh, pieces to my right. This is still within the same collection. It is still Moray or Olivia, if you will. I believe this is called Model Behavior. And so I love that the choice is there um, for anyone interested that they can actually purchase this and then they can put her in any outfit that they would like. What was the thought behind that to, to you know, take Moray out of the outfits, let her be Olivia, and then let her kind of dress however the mood hits her. Well, you know, one of the things that sets a doll apart from like a, a sculpture or statue, even a dressed uh, figure, is the ability to remove the clothes. You know, that's, that's got to be, and, and it's usually hair and the ability to remove the clothes. So what makes her a doll is that you can remove her clothes. And part of that is that whole being able to uh, use a doll as a, um, a canvas if you're if you're an artist yourself and want to do that, or you can you know you can do a makeover on the doll, see what she looks like in uh, any one of these outfits. And you know it's it's also the way people have have traditionally collected my fashion figures is that they'll 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 either do it one of two ways: they'll buy the dress doll as is, or They'll buy, buy um, the basic doll, which is Olivia Chase, and then they'll dress her up. So you, could, you can dress her up as Moray, even though she's Olivia Chase. And the, the ones on the other side of the screen, the dress dolls are the Moray dolls. So. I love that. Quick question for you. Let's say the collector you know, purchases will go with the model behavior, the Olivia, and they purchase all the outfits with it. What is the best way, or should I say the recommended way, to store the outfits when she's not wearing them? People have different ways of doing this. I, some people just put them in drawers. Some people keep them in boxes. I mean, they, they, the, the, the outfits will come in display boxes. 
So you can never take them out. If you want Olivia and here are the outfits that come with her. A lot of collectors do that. Um, some collectors will just take everything out and put it in a trunk or something like that. That's, that's a good way to do it too. I mean, I personally love that you just have them on the other dolls. So I will just go ahead and purchase all the other dolls so that I can display all of it. There you go. The <laughs> so Robert, you've partnered with SciShow Atomic Misfits for this collection where our model is Discover, Empower, Inspire, Celebrate. So talk a little bit about how Moire, your outfits, and Olivia can uphold that model. Well, to me, it's a very interesting and fascinating uh, storyline. And I think that there's, and um, we, and we've just started where the story can go too. There's, there's, there's a lot. So I think, I think discovery is definitely um, the storyline and a new character. We used to have a motto, motto at my company called believe in the power of play. And I, I truly believe that it's like, you know, when you're playing, it's creative and it's, it's relaxing and all this. And I think, you know, collectors, adults don't play enough. So Hopefully this empowers the collector to play, if that all makes I sense. I love that. Yeah, that's fantastic. And what about inspire? I hope the, the collector and the, um, will be inspired to use these as they're meant to be used uh, as, uh, to play and to imagine. Yeah. And finally, we have celebrate. Celebrate fashion and, and uh, the beauty of a reluctant model. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. No, I love that, I love that whole, you know, that's, that's a good motto. It is really fantastic. And Robert, uh, before we let you go, I know everyone watching, uh, whether they are seeing you for the first time or they're long time fans of yours, I feel like a lot of people we talked about, you know, discovering, inspiring power and celebrate. So I think a lot of collectors deep down want to try their hands or very interested to start in doll design or in sculpture, would you have any beginner tips for them? Oh yeah, just do it. Oh, you, you got, you, stop thinking about it and do it. I mean, you know, if you, if you digitally, you know, sculpting, you can do it anywhere. Uh, just, you know, download ZBrush or whatever. You just got to start. And, you know, that, that's that sculpting, doll design. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're interest, more interested in the costuming and all that, um, <clears throat> get a doll and just start practicing. Yeah, I can't, I can't stress this enough. If, you, if you've got a passion, you just got to start doing it. You got to start doing it. I was always slow at it. So, <laughs> you know, I was always 10 years later than I should have been at everything I've ever done. So it's, you know, at least I got to it, you know. But uh, start, start as soon as you identify a passion. I think you've done a tremendous job with these dolls, with this collection. Robert, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Wendy, it was my pleasure. It was fun, fun interview. For everyone watching, if you would like to pre-order this collection or get to know Robert a little bit more, because as always, he is such a doll, head on over to side.show slash Robert Tonner for more detail. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to let your geek side show. Be sure to subscribe by hitting the S icon on your screen and click the bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.